Everyone is aware of the present pandemic COVID-19 that is contagious viral infection disease 2019 caused by a newly discovered coronavirus. In this video we're going to see its virology. Coronavirus is the name of the family of viruses that causes a similar type of infection and has a similarly distinct morphology. So the actual name or the identification code of this particular virus is novel SARS-CoV-2 that is novel which means new SARS-CoV is severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus type 2. Let's see the history of the coronavirus. The first coronavirus was discovered in the 1930s named as avian coronavirus or infectious bronchitis virus which infected the birds. In 1940, two more animal viruses namely mouse hepatitis virus and transmissible gastroenteritis virus were discovered. The first human coronavirus that is HCOV229E was discovered in the 1960s followed by the first epidemic that been caused by the coronavirus family which is SARS-CoV in 2003 followed by HCOV NL63 in 2004 and HQ1 in 2005. The second epidemic which is caused by the coronavirus family is MERS in 2012 followed by the present pandemic SARS-CoV-2. These virus found to severely affect or infect the respiratory system. Now let's see the virus classification. The coronavirus constitutes the subfamily orthocoronovirane in the family coronaviridae of order nidovirales and realm riboviridae. They are classified under group 4 of Baltimore classification as they possess a positive sense single stranded RNA genome. These are enveloped viruses that encapsulates the RNA genome and the nucleocapsid of helical symmetry. The genome size is largest among RNA virus ranging from 26 to 32 kilobases. Their characteristic club shaped spike that protrudes from the surface gives an image reminiscent of solar corona in the electron micrograph. Hence, they acquired the name Corona. These virus affects both mammals and birds. The phylogenetic study shows there are four major types of coronavirus. Alpha and beta coronavirus that infect the mammals and gamma and delta coronavirus that primarily infects the birds. So the present SARS-CoV-2 is a beta coronavirus. In the case of humans, uh, the infection is mainly associated with the respiratory tract that can range from mild as in the case of rhinoviruses and to a lethal stage in cases of SARS, MERS and the present pandemic COVID-19. So let's see the morphology of the coronavirus. Coronavirus are large pleomorphic spherical structure with spike like surface projection. So when we term something as pleomorphic, it means they have the ability to alter their morphology, their biological function or their reproductive modes in response to the environmental condition. Unlike bacteria, these can't change its own shape. It mutates, which is obviously evident from the phylogenic analysis of the present COVID-19 where two strains of novel coronavirus type 2 were identified designated as type L accounting for 70% that were predominated during the earlier days of the epidemic in the China and type S accounting for 30% after the widespread. The average diameter of coronavirus is about 120 nanometer that is around 0.12 micron. The envelope is of 80 nanometer and the spikes of 20 nanometer. The envelope is made up of a lipid bilayer 
where the membrane and the spike proteins are anchored. It also has a short spike-like surface protein called hemagglutinin esterase. In electron micrographs, this envelope region appears as electron-dense shells. The envelope protects the nucleocapsid formed of numerous nucleocapsid N protein which in turn protects the RNA genome. The modes of transmission. The initial mode of transmission is not yet clearly known as to how it transmitted to a human whether it's from bats or from any other animal. However, as the outbreak progressed, person to person spread became the main mode of transmission that is human to human spread became the main mode of transmission. The person to person spread occurs via respiratory droplets resembling the spread of that of influenza infection. Cough, sneezes or just talking close by can infect other people if the droplet make direct contact with the mucous membrane. Touching an infected surface and then touching the eyes, nose or mouth can also lead to infection. Before getting into the infection process, let's see how our lungs function. Each human lung has a separate section called lobes. Air flows via the windpipe or trachea to a large tube-like structure called bronchi and then to the smaller tubes called bronchioles to finally reach tiny sac called alveoli. These tiny sacs are covered by capillary vessels that actually performs the oxygen transportation from blood to our lungs and lungs to the blood. So this is the place where the CO2 is entering the alveoli and the blood takes away the oxygen to the other parts of the body. All through the airway, we have a protective membrane called mucus and a hair-like structure called cilia. These two are responsible to catch most of the foreign particles, including many microorganisms, and blow out via the airway. So these form the primary defense system in our respiratory tract. The virus which escaped this resistant and moved into the alveoli are attacked by the cells of our immune system. Now let's see the infection process. The crown shaped viral spike glycoprotein attaches to its complementary receptor in our cell membrane. In the case of novel SARS-CoV-2, the receptor is angiotensin converting enzyme type 2 that is ACE2 receptor. So far now, it is still not clearly viable whether the virus enter into the cell via fusion of viral and cell membrane or by cell endocytosis. Since coronaviruses have a positive sense single stranded RNA genome, it can directly produce its protein from the cell cytoplasm without entering the nucleus. Firstly, it synthesizes its RNA polymerase which is required to synthesize the minus strand using the main positive strand as a template. Subsequently, the negative strand serves as a template to transcribe smaller subgenomic positive RNAs which are used to synthesize all other proteins. Furthermore, this negative strand serves for the replication of a new positive stranded RNA genome. This replicated RNA become the genome for the progeny virus. The protein and the genomes accumulate and assemble to form a progeny virus which is released from the host cell via exocytosis. The released progeny virus move to the other host cells and the replication multiply. Now let's see how our immune system works. Our immune system has two parts called as innate and adaptive and uh, considering microorganism or any kind of a viral infection the adaptive system plays the major role the adaptive system is what specifically responds to an invading virus or bacteria the adaptive immune response consists of b cells 
and T cells. B cells produce antibodies for a specific virus or a bacteria and T cells shows B cells what kind of antibodies to produce. And T cells also kill the infected cells that is the host cell where the replication happens so that the virus can't spread. Both the cell remember the specific virus that way when the virus invades again the adaptive immune system will respond quickly and efficiently preventing an infection. In the case of a weaker immune system the virus can spread rapidly and infect more cells for further replication and the T cells which now has to kill more infected cells leaves the alveoli filled with cell fluids making it difficult to breathe leading to severe pneumonia condition. The most common symptoms of COVID-19 are fever, tiredness and dry cough. Some patients may have sore throat or diarrhea. Some people become infected but don't develop as many symptoms and don't feel unwell. Most people recover from the disease without needing special treatment. Around one out of every six people who get COVID-19 becomes seriously ill and develops difficulty in breathing. Aged people and those with medical problems such as high blood pressure, heart problems or diabetes are more likely to develop serious illness. Currently, there are no specific vaccines or medicine for COVID-19. Treatment is directed towards relieving these symptoms. Let's see some of the research activities that has been carried out in finding a vaccine or an antiviral drug. Plasma-based therapy, vaccines based on RNA and recombinant DNA, drugs like Remdesivir, chloroquine that is hydroxychloroquine and Fabripower are being tested clinically which significantly reduced the recovery period as well as the infection rate. Since these are not currently available for medical treatment and uh, just in the clinical trial stage, leave us with only one option of protecting ourselves from getting infected. We can reduce our chances of being infected or spreading COVID-19 by taking some simple precautions. Regularly and thoroughly clean our hands with an alcohol-based hand rub or wash them with soap and water. Maintain at least one meter distance between yourself and with anyone who is coughing or sneezing. Avoid touching eyes, nose and mouth. Cover mouth and nose with bent elbow or tissue when coughing or sneezing. Dispose the used tissue immediately. Maintain social distancing and self-isolate if you feel any symptoms of headache or fever.